481,629. That is precisely how many video essays there are on YouTube about The Dark Knight. Can you even call yourself a video essayist if you haven't done a 13 minute breakdown of that film? Well, regardless of the answer, I don't call myself a video essayist, so it doesn't matter to me. It is true though, The Dark Knight has been dissected in almost every way conceivable, but I thought I would toss my hat into the ring to just maybe produce something that is unique. Instead of looking at constructing an antagonist, or elevating conflict, or just stating how much I love the movie, which I do, I thought I would take a dive into the dialogue of The Dark Knight and look at the technical writing aspects used to create such a standout narrative. You don't need to be an editor to enjoy the movie, as anyone off the street can tell you, but because I am an editor, I think I can offer a perspective to people that might, one, help increase their own skills in critically assessing fiction, and two, highlight some of the great writing techniques within the film that might go unnoticed. What we can do now is look at a scene that I feel offers a lot in terms of great use of dialogue, that scene being Joker and the mobsters. If you need a refresher on the scene and want to watch it all the way through beforehand without my commentary, there is a link below in the description. If not, we can jump right into it. So in my last dialogue dive with Tywin and Joffrey, I was focused on pointing out writing techniques like subtext. That won't be happening in this video. Instead, I'm going to be focused on the execution of a writing technique that this scene does exceptionally well. Character Introduction Now, I know that technically, the Joker was introduced during the bank heist. However, this scene with the mobsters is really when we as the audience get the first introduction to who the Joker is as a character, what he thinks, how he acts, what he wants. What I'm looking for from a critical editing perspective is how well the dialogue in this scene works to introduce the character of the Joker. But you may be thinking, how hard is it to introduce a character? Well, actually kind of difficult. Just throwing info crammed dialogue at the audience during an introduction will get you a mess like this. Floyd Lawton. AKA Deadshot. He's the most wanted hitman in the world. Let's say he has an elite clientele. But everyone has a weakness, and a weakness can be leveraged. His is an 11 year old honor student in Gotham City, his daughter. Mama says I can't live with you because you kill people. Info dumping during a character introduction is just as bad as not giving any information at all. Giving too much info removes that mystery and allure of naturally finding out more about a character as the narrative progresses. The best introductions show you glimpses of a character's personality, traits, motivations, all the things that make them, them. This is what I'm going to be paying close attention to in this scene. How well the seeds of the Joker's character are planted through dialogue in order to be able to grow into something more as the narrative progresses. I don't want too little information, but I don't want too much either. So let's dive in to see what we find. Give me one reason why I shouldn't have my boy here pull your head off. How about a magic track? So a great aspect of Joker's dialogue is how unpredictable it is. This is our first little character trait seed planted through dialogue. And the Joker as a character is all about unpredictability because that is effectively all chaos really is. And to show how this seed grows, the Joker flat out states his relationship to unpredictability and chaos later in the movie. You know, I just do things. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> Even his expressed backstory is unpredictable. Sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. I stick a razor in my mouth and do this to myself. Another great aspect of Joker's unpredictable dialogue is that you never know quite what is going to come out of his mouth next. It works to keep the audience laser focused on him. Lastly, for something more internal to the narrative, it also instantly puts the Joker in control of the flow of the conversation. Gamble attempts to grab hold of the conversation by threatening Joker. Give me one reason why I shouldn't have my boy here pull your head off. But Joker completely diffuses that by asking his own strange question. How about a magic trick? I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. Ta -da! It's... it's gone. So, real quick, even though this is a super small detail, I love the dialogue that the Joker gives after performing the pencil trick. It shows he absolutely does not care about killing and the loss of life. It is all literally just a joke to him. This is, of course, a defining character trait we see throughout the film. Oh, and by the way, the suit, it wasn't cheap. You ought to know, you bought it. 
One of the golden rules of storytelling is give the audience what they want, just not how they expect it. This rule applies to dialogue as well. The Joker could have just said, yeah, I stole from you guys, but that's really straightforward and really bland. Instead, he says, you ought to know you bought it, which is a much more fascinating way of delivering information through witty, tight dialogue. It's consistent use of little details like this that add up to separate a boring script from an engaging one. Sit. I want to hear proposition. Let's wind the clocks back a year. These cops and lawyers wouldn't dare cross any of you. I mean, what happened? Did your, your balls drop off? Hmm? You see, a guy like me... Freak. A guy like me. Look, listen. This is a really cool piece of character development that comes by way of the dialogue. Gamble calls Joker... Freak. And it actually knocks the Joker out of his rhythm. Something like this actually happens again later in the scene, and I will dive into it deeper then. I know why you choose to have your little <clears throat> group therapy sessions in broad daylight. I know why you're afraid to go out at night. This small section of dialogue is one of the most important in the whole scene. A huge part of Joker's character throughout the narrative is a search for authenticity. He believes that people, when driven to their most authentic selves, are just like him. He believes that he truly knows people at their most genuine level. I knew your friends better than you ever did. But I know the truth. There's no going back. I know the squealers when I see them. And I know why you choose to have your little <clears throat> group therapy sessions in broad daylight. I know why you're afraid to go out at night. He yearns for people to show who they authentically are. You just take off your little mask and show us all who you really are. Does it depress you, Commissioner, to know just how alone you really are? I think it was a great choice to plant this character trait seed in this scene using dialogue. I think it allows the audience a great glimpse into a facet of the Joker that gets expounded upon later. What do you propose? It's simple. We uh, kill the Batman. <laughs> if it's so simple, why haven't you done it already? If you're good at something, never do it for free. How much you will? Uh, half. Here we have some excellent pieces to include in any character introduction. Goal and conflict. The Joker says he wants half of the mob's money, which would be his goal. And the thing he has to do to reach that goal is killing the Batman, which would be the conflict. However, in what I consider to be a great decision, the dialogue of this section of the scene delivers a false goal. The Joker is not at all concerned with money. It's not about money. It's about sending a message. Or killing the Batman. I don't, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? False goals are utilized in narratives to keep a character unpredictable and unknown, causing the revelation of their true goal to be a twist in the story. As Joker's character is based on unpredictability and uncertainty, this works very well in establishing his traits. <laughs> You're crazy. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Here it is again. The Joker is called crazy, and we can see that he's visibly displeased by it. This is a fantastic departure from previous iterations of Joker, who would have reveled in being dubbed insane, melding really well with Nolan's grittier, more realistic Batman universe. This Joker honestly believes that he sees the world with a clarity that others don't. If anything, he probably thinks he is the only sane one. In fact, we get a little bit of this information from Joker himself. You see, this is how crazy Batman's made Gotham. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. The Joker sees himself as the protagonist. He believes that he needs to open the eyes of all the people who live in Gotham to who they truly are. This dialogue shows that being called crazy is an insult to the clarity he believes he has. If we don't deal with this now, soon little uh, Gamble here won't be able to get a nickel for his grandma. Enough from the clown! Da, 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 da. Let's not blow this out of proportion. So that last sentence is a great piece of dialogue to show another aspect of the Joker. 
Not only is the death of others a joke to him, he doesn't even take his own death seriously. None of it matters to him at all. We see this character see grow and blossom later in the movie as well, when he has Harvey point a gun at his head and when he laughs after being thrown from a building. <laughs> it's just another small detail that connects to his character as a whole. You think you could steal from us and just walk away? Yeah. I'm putting the word out. 500 grand for this clown dead. A million alive. So I can teach him some manners first. All right, so listen, why don't you give me a call when you want to start taking things a little more seriously? Here's my card. Now, I can't say with certainty, but as an editor, I want to believe that the last line of dialogue was intentionally included as subtle foreshadowing that the Joker never actually intended to work with the mobsters. Right before the end of the scene, the Joker says, When you want to start taking things a little more seriously. Of course, the next time we hear the Joker talking about being serious, he's holding a knife to Gamble's face. Why so serious? I'd like to think that this whole business with the mob was just a ruse for the Joker to get access to weapons and men. His dialogue in this scene plays off of what we find out later. Or it could just be a complete coincidence, I don't know. Anyway, I hope I was able to point out a few things in this scene from a dialogue and character introduction perspective that might have gone unnoticed. There were a dozen scenes that I could have chosen to dive into, mostly because this movie is a freaking masterpiece, but I thought this might be the best one to focus on. If you guys have any suggestions for other scenes you want me to look at, let me know in the comments. Also, for anyone who might have missed the announcement, I have opened myself up to do editing. If you have a short story or a novel that you want edited, or you want guidance and coaching on writing, feel free to contact me through email. I offer stuff like developmental edits, where I work alongside you chapter by chapter, novel critiques, concept development, first impression edits, and as I said before, coaching opportunities. And if you're worried about pricing, you can probably relax. I want to make things as affordable as possible for you guys. If you were interested, email me with your genre, word count, and name to get more information. Again, thank you all for watching. As always, it was a pleasure, and I will talk to you all again soon.